Our brains are designed to simplify the world around us. And whether we like it or not, we all think in stereotypes. Some of the stereotypes are harmless. For example, we label nationalities based on the foods they eat. You know, French like it long and hard. Yet Italians throw theirs up in the air and cover it in tomato sauce. But there are countries that are not so lucky to be known by their food or culture. Places that most of the world only associates with war and terror. Which now brings us to today's video. Our journey takes place in Iraqi Kurdistan. It's an autonomous region in northern Iraq. And while driving our van through this beautiful part of the world, we suddenly realized that if we wanted to learn more about the country in Europe, then instead of visiting the touristic sites, we would simply stop in a small town and have a look at the local life ourselves. Oh well, and that's when we understood that we probably have to do the same here in Iraq. Sounds legit, right? No tour guides, no research. Just two European tourists in a random Iraqi town. What could go wrong? And well, this is where it all began. As we were slowly closing in on the destination that we had chosen on the map, we started to see small signs of life. First kids playing football on the highway. Then nomadic tribes chasing their animals between trucks and cars. And finally, on a very border of the town, two sheep on the back of a truck, coming to spend the day in the city. You know, all the normal stuff you expect to see when coming to a new town. Once we parked our car, it was finally time to start discovering. Friends, we have uh, arrived in a town. It's called Akre, and uh, we literally don't know nothing about it. Classic. One of the first things we realized in Akre, the town we were visiting, was that the two sheep we had seen before were not the only animals having a day off in town. That's a clear sign that the streets are shared with donkeys and humans. You seem to be like an expert of poop today, but I'm not sure about your, your expertise about this topic. Donkeys actually have an important role in this town. That's the owner of the poop over there. Many streets of Akre are built on mountainsides and driving vehicles on such steep and narrow places would be impossible. A thing that also became quite obvious soon was that not all stereotypes are wrong. And what am I currently talking about was the color of this town. Although Iraqi Kurdistan is supposed to be the greenest part of the country, then at this time of the year, Akre did not support this claim. The houses here are yellow, street themselves yellow, and the landscape surrounding the city also yellow. The only things that stood out from all of this were the roofs of the houses. Most of the roofs actually all over the country look like this. There's this plastic material to keep the rain out and then rocks, tires, whatever you can find on top. Here it seems to be more about the practicality than the looks. And I guess it is one of the best ways to get your house a cheap yet waterproof roof. And just on a street like this people are selling roofs. As we kept strolling through the small streets of Akre, we suddenly found ourselves at quite an incredible sight. So we just saw from the street a local baker and... Uh, in you see? No. no. <laughs> wow! At the beginning of the video, we talked about how French and Italians like their bread. And for the first time, we had a chance to see how locals do it here. If I had to describe it, I would say that first the dough is laid on a soft pillow, and then, afterwards, carefully slapped onto a hot wall, where it then slowly bubbles up and becomes a masterpiece, like this. So simple, yet so beautiful. Of course, we could not leave the place without buying some of this delicious and beautiful bread. And four naan breads like this cost uh, 60 cents, 60, 70 cents. The positive interaction we had with the baker gave us the first idea of what the locals were going to be like in Accra. Yet, 
even after eight years of traveling, we were not ready for what this man had in plan for us. Friends, before we go back to today's adventure, I have to tell you that this video is not sponsored by anyone. It's not sponsored, but there's still a thing that I need to share with you. Many of you probably know that before coming to Iraq, then we were in Turkey. And on this channel, we have a beautiful group of Turkish friends who like to travel with us. But sadly, over the last few videos, we've realized that there is also some Turkish nationalists who sadly are doing everything in their power to make those videos not do well on YouTube. They have called us terrorists due to the clothes we wear. They're spreading hate in the comment section and also dislike and report this video to stop it from spreading. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you enjoy the videos we make, we could really use your help right now. The easiest way to help is just to like the video and to leave a positive comment. But if you think that your friends and family might also enjoy the message, then we would really appreciate if you could also share those videos. And as a last thing, I just want to say thank you to our Patreon family. We have nine people on our Patreon account and it feels amazing to have you over there. No matter what, it doesn't matter if our videos are doing well or not, you're still there and we are super grateful to have you. But now, back to the adventure. Hello. Hello. Wait, where were we? Ah, this guy. After we had seen a local baker work his magic, we heard from an English teacher next door that on top of the mountain, there is supposed to be an ancient castle from where the whole city can be seen. We asked few people on the street for directions. We've been just asking people Kale, which means castle, and they're showing us up the hill. And about five minutes later, we had made it to what we thought was the path uphill. The thing in Iraq is that there is not a lot of tourist infrastructure. And there has been times when such paths are the only way to a beautiful site. But with every step upwards, it got steeper and more dangerous. Didn't really expect this kind of road. We were about to give up when suddenly there he was. His name was Destan. And from what we understood, he had seen us climbing the hill left all his responsibilities on the side and followed us. We just found a local gentleman and him being here really gave us a little bit of hope because it got really steep. As we were quite desperate and quite stuck on a steep mountainside, we decided to follow him. He walks like a mountain goat. He's got 30 years on me, but so steady footing. Yep. We were following a total stranger into Iraqi mountains. And honestly, I sometimes wonder myself if everything is right in my head. The mountains are just so beautiful. Once we got to the top of the mountain, Destan decided to lead us into a cave. But believe it or not, this was part of the ancient castle. I must say that such places are part of the beauty of this region. In Europe, a 3,000 years old castle would have an expensive ticket, would be surrounded by a high fence, and tour buses would line up to find parking next to it. But here, we were alone. Us, the history, and of course, the view over Akre. While taking in the view, we suddenly saw that Destan was leaving. We ran after him to say thank you. And as a last thing, he pointed us to the right way to get down from the mountain. There goes our savior. He just appeared out of nowhere, guided us up, spent like 20, 30 minutes of his time, climbed a really steep mountain with us, and now disappeared. We barely had time to say, say thank you. Just incredible. And in the end, he expected nothing in return. Meeting him was truly a humbling experience. And after taking few minutes to enjoy the mountain top, we started to go down once again.
Akre really looked beautiful from this angle. Once we got down from the mountain, we bought some water from some of the cutest salespeople we have ever seen. Oui. Thank you. Thank you. Super. I guess here it doesn't matter how old you are. Everyone has to do their it's best cold. to make the ends meet. After that, we continued our journey in town. And behind every corner, there seemed to be a surprise. One time, we show a washing machine. We just saw that the street is totally wet. That didn't only wash the clothes, but also the streets. Next time, a leaking gas bottle. Not a good sign. There's a gas smell in the air. Should be a no smoking sign. And soon we realized that even basic things like water and electricity are not to be taken granted. For example, everyone who can afford it seems to have a generator to avoid the power outages that the city grid constantly has. The cold side of the road is full of them. This one is pretty big. That one is pretty big. Wherever we've been sitting, like we saw how electricity went, came back, went, came back. Yet as we soon realized, next to all of this chaos and uncertainty, there are still few things Hello. that you can always count on in a small Hello. town like this. Some might even call such things stereotypes. For example, first thing is that you can always find a barbershop. The, th <laughs> the funny thing is that there's just unusually many uh, barbershops. One there. One there. Although locals don't seem to care a lot how their houses look from outside, but their hair is something else. Another barber shop, believe it or not, but another barber shop. The haircuts of local men always have to look presentable and spot on. Second thing you can always be sure of is that no matter how much chaos is on the streets, then places of worship will always be clean and peaceful. Doesn't matter if it's a Christian church or a Islamic mosque. It's like a different world here. These places are always beautiful, well kept and worth a visit. Pretty damn cool that we are in Iraq. Pretty damn cool. And so far it seems that the third thing you can always count on in Iraqi Kurdistan is the kindness of locals. Not sure if you can see, there's two ladies behind me up that uh, street and as we were walking, they just asked like, do you want to eat something? They're super kind. No matter if we're in small town or a big city, no difference if we talk with a shepherd or a young university student. Kindness and hospitality is simply part of the culture here. And even if the locals don't seem to have a lot themselves, they are more than happy to share this little that they own. As the sun was starting to set and our day in Akre about to end, I felt happy deep within. Just two weeks in this country has proven so many of my stereotypes wrong. And although I know that my brain will always try to simplify things around me, then now with the new information, it will hopefully categorize this country as the place where people slap their breads on hot wall and are kind to everyone they meet, even without a clear reason. And just as those new stereotypes were setting in, we heard a voice calling us. <laughs> we were just filming a part of the video and we started hearing, Mr. Mr. <laughs> and uh, they're asking us to a small bakery. The voice invited us to a bakery and this time, oh no, oh no, the stereotype of bread was already broken two minutes later. Slapping it onto the wall is not the only way they do it here. But I guess that's the thing about stereotypes. We will always have them in our heads. That's just the way our brains work. But as long as we're ready to let them go, when presented with new information, they are nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> so 
Octopus! <laughs> Friends, that was our adventure from a small town, small city in Iraq, Acre. We hope that you learned something new because for us it was totally unknown what was going to happen to us today and it was very cool, nice experience. It was nice to see a totally new culture with fresh new eyes and next time we will continue our Iraqi journey. We hope that you will join us. For this you can hit the button down there and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.